Okay, welcome. So this session is about buying and selling Drupal. So um, why you shouldn't buy websites and that people are buying digital experiences. So who is on the selling side of Drupal? Again? So who sells Drupal? Huh? Is there anyone looking to buy Drupal? No one? Okay, so we're all sellers, so I'll, I'll, I'll focus on that. Um, let's give you a little intro, so um, why uh, do I know something about uh, selling Drupal sites? So, I'm one of the founders of, uh, of DropSolid and we've been around for almost six years now. Um, Drupal is always at the co has been at the core of, uh, of our offering, uh, from <coughs> strategy to design to optimization uh, and implementation. We have a team of uh, almost 70 people. Um, myself, I started out as a developer, but soon I found myself I had to pitch Drupal to customers, um, so I did a lot of selling in uh, the last six, seven years. And with selling, I mean guiding customers towards uh, the best digital experience they could have for their company. And that's what uh, this talk is about. So, in essence, Selling Drupal alone these days might be enough, but in the future it will definitely be not enough anymore. No? The customers we're talking to, they want to know their customers. No? So we'll need some kind of a platform or leverage Drupal so we can use all this data to create better digital experiences. And to understand where customers are going, we need to look a little bit at uh, the digital journey. So the digital journey starts with a simple website all the way to very personalized one-to-one uh, -one customer interactions. Um, it uses Drupal in the core, but to do it really successfully, you need other marketing technology to achieve the goal and that's to serve the best digital experience to the end user. And of course that is an experience where the user is central, is being approached through all these channels in any context, in any experience he is having at that time. And why would you sell an experience? Well, there's a, there's a lot of data available right now uh, by uh, analyst firms. Like for example, we have this research by, uh, by Gartner that shows that any customer experience project resulted in, 93% of these projects resulted in some kind of a return on investment. What kind of a return on investment? It goes from loyalty all the way to uh, reduced service costs, uh, increased customer lifetime values, increased revenues. So customer experience is definitely something companies are investing in. And yeah, if you look at uh, some data from the SaaS industry, of course software as a service depends heavily on how good the customer experience is. Uh, even they, they even have like 50% more lifetime value once a customer becomes a promoter. So that's really significant for the value of your business. And I also found this research very interesting. If you would invest it in 2000 in companies that were um, really focusing on customer satisfaction or you would have invested in the standard market in a standard fund you would add like five times the investment that you would have had otherwise so customer experience is is definitely a thing and um, why is it a thing because it gives you as a company the one who is buying eh, 
three big advantages. It increases your customer lifetime value because uh, if you are delivering a better experiences, customers are more likely to stay longer at your company, buying more, buying longer. Um, you also have a decrease in, in customer acquisition costs because your experience sells your company. So that means that customers uh, will talk about uh, your company more because the experience is great, which in, in essence attracts more customers. And then I think the most important one is the, the efficiency, the operational gains. Uh, if you have a digital platform to serve your customers, it doesn't matter if you have a million customers or 10 customers, it scales that instead of having um, uh, people on the phone, account managers, buildings, offices to receive people. If you can serve people through a digital platform, it scales, obviously. <coughs> so a lot of people ask me, okay, that's good, eh, customer experience, um, but we are in the market for a website. And we want a website with the latest trends. And that's a bit of a who has had that question from his customers what's the latest trends I want the website with the latest trends who has had that yeah all right so this is a bit of a non question because these websites are becoming experience platforms and what's the difference between a website and an experience platform it's a a couple of key things and one of the main things is personalization omnichannel analytics and the user experience and then on the cost side it's scalability mostly achieved with cloud machine learning integrations things like that so if you are looking at big trends in websites I think the biggest trend is that there are no websites anymore we're creating experiences and then of course we have to understand if you are buying an experience uh, we're building it on a on a digital experience platform we have to explain this uh, what is it and I've been thinking a long time about this because it's a really complicated uh, concept and it's an abstract concept uh, but I've come to these uh, three things, like for business users, uh, it's a thing that connects what you know about your customer uh, with how they interact with it. So presentation, API code, you see something emerge there. Uh. For an IT person, I explain it's a platform that sits on top of your business logic, your uh, authentication systems, and it connects your organization with the end user. It orchestrates all these experiences over all these channels. It personalizes <coughs> it. Uh, for a marketing person, we came up with this. You have your funnel. Uh, for a really uh, smart marketing person, we came up with this, and this is just—it's just an example of a Martech stack. It's, it's the the tech stack we use at Tropsolid to to market our own products. Uh, so uh, you can you can see all the marketing stages from from awareness to uh, to action. Uh, you see all the channels where you attract your traffic, your uh, marketing technology uh, like like Mautic and, and, and Mailchimp to, to deliver the campaigns, uh, video tools, uh, the chatbot, you have the analytics on the other side. And then of course you have Drupal that orchestrates all these experiences where all these campaigns and all this traffic is landing on and captures all that data, sends it to your uh, CRM ERP systems and uses that data to personalize the experience so that's what it what a DXP looks for a, a marketing person so we have a, a business person an IT person and a marketing person okay so 
how do you sell Drupal as the central component in such a system? And I think that's the that's the hard part because that requires uh, a lot of Drupal shops to step out of their comfort zone and broaden their service offering uh, because you're not only selling a CMS system anymore, you're selling the central piece in an experience platform. So you need to explain to the customer, okay, how do we how do we come up with a strategy? How do we design this? How we will implement this? How we will optimize it? On what kind of a platform we will host it? What kind of marketing technologies are we going to select? And there's a lot of integration going on be between all these pieces. So that means, as a shop, yeah, you need to have uh, you need to have these uh, these capabilities on board. So what we did at Drop Solid, we we packaged the the whole thing and um, it's not to pitch our product but um, it's just to explain like, like how we we approach the market on doing so so you have on the one hand you have the the tools for the developers on the other hand you have the tools for the marketers where you have the Drupal CMS the development tools and on the other hand you have marketing automation and personalization um, how do we sell it it's a story we take the customer and we put the customer at the top they are landing on the CMS yeah, campaigns are being triggered from the marketing automation system the data management system the customer data management system is looking for personalization to opportunities for personalization it basically collects data from all data sources and then uses that to um, personalize the campaigns and the experiences generated by the CMS and then as an optional component you can of course uh, provide your customers with data analytics with business intelligence on um, yeah how things are running and as you see Drupal is still the the, the main component without having the the, the CMS and the, the, the optionally the commerce platform you cannot build the marketing automation you cannot build the customer data platform so that's how we, we go to these uh, business people because you have to convince three stakeholders you have to convince business people you have to convince marketers and the, the developers who's going to evolve this platform because these are multi-year projects to build all the sites to connect it to integrate it with the automation with uh, to collect all the data and then use the data meaningful yeah and optionally yeah you can even uh, use smart uh, smart segments uh, my colleague nick gave a talk about this uh, yesterday on how to use it in search um how to use it in personalization but what we forget I think as a as an as an open source product is all these things provide our customers with no lock-in we can provide this with no lock-in so they can go to another vendor because we sell it so much we tend to forget it but it's, it I think it's one of our biggest USPs because your because your customer can leave with all these tools the forces in the market will assure him that he will get a good total cost of ownership because other people are also capable of hosting all these um, engines if you will all these components how do we um, get all these people together to like create a vision because uh, most most customers are still in the market for just the CMS part. It's to make them look beyond just um, regular campaigns, regular segmenting. It's all about collecting the data 
of your customer is about knowing your customer once you know your customer you can start to do other things that regular websites cannot do and Drupal happens to be the platform that is already capable of delivering these experiences it has the API's it has everything it needs it, it has this the structured content um, it has everything to do this so one of the biggest opportunities I think if you if all your customers are already on Drupal is that you can evolve them to the next step they're already like one step ahead of all the other competition and then of course what we also do is um, yeah we we, uh, we create cases eh? um, like for example this one we, we show how, how the um, how this works how the personalization works for example so this is personalization based on uh, machine learning segments so what it did is it captured all the data from the last 14 days uh, on our website and now it's analyzing the four big patterns in uh, in this and on our website we, we see um, a business decision maker community visitors people who are looking for a job uh, and tech decision makers um, how does it work it it analyzes all the words you click on and then it creates these segments and then in Drupal in your paragraphs you can use these uh, machine learning segments so if traffic is recognized as being in one of these four buckets you can show uh, a paragraph or a block or any any type of content basically in Drupal you can make it appear um, on this uh, on this page for example a tech decision maker could get a call to action to to see a demo a business deci decision maker could perhaps see a call to action to uh, a case study for example so this is a simple but very effective way to to personalize your uh, your drupal website and it's any customer who has a drupal 8 website could benefit from this um, so other things the multi the multi-site so we, we've created cases around the multi-site application i think uh, the people who were before here uh, saw what the power of uh, an um, also a decoupled application could be like a selector for products and all these things so the the omni-channel capabilities showcasing the omni-channel capabilities of drupal really helps to explain the difference between regular websites and a, and a digital experience built with Drupal. Um, also the dashboarding, collecting all the data from all the different channels. Um, there's a, a lot of tools available right now, you can build this on top. Um, the machine learning, uh, for example, to, cre to increase uh, relevancy in search, to increase the experience. Um, and also yeah the marketing automation the personalization to to increase not only uh, visiting and conversion but also shopping experiences so it it the the you can go to the market not pitching why drupal is strong but also why drupal will uh, allow you to achieve your business goals because it integrates with all that other market marketing technology and that you're capable of building an experience platform for your customers with Drupal as a central piece. So I think that's that's really uh, really powerful, and I I think it it wouldn't be possible um, if Drupal wasn't investing in this for like the last uh, seven years. Um, to summarize, so selling Drupal as a standalone product. I think if you can sell it as an experience and, and your customer can know their customers and it leverage the data it will it will put you at the really at, it will it will make you one of the key partners of your customers if you're able to do these kinds of projects with them because these kinds of projects will really transform their business 
and it will allow, allow you to have a, a customer for many many years um, because doing these things is is not easy and a lot of traditional marketing agencies struggle with this and Drupal shops are typically yeah we're at a technical technically high level and that's needed to achieve these kinds of products but you know you have to you have to sell it to the customer and most of these other shops are better at doing that so I think you can improve there but um, we have the advantage so that was it if anyone has questions Yeah? Could you tell just a little bit more about the machine learning that uh, you mentioned? So, was it developed by you? Is it someone else? Uh, yeah, it's something we've, we've developed. Um, it's, a, it's a machine learning algorithm that takes all the traffic data and categorizes it in, uh, in patterns. Yeah. So, it's something we've, we've developed. Uh, that can be used as a, an extra data source to classify your traffic and do some kind of a personalization with it. Yeah. Okay. Other questions? Okay, great.